Hello, hello, hello. This is Carl A. Smith, a.k.a. Dr. Cash, coming to you with our weekly stock market analysis for the first full week of March 2020. Coming off of a very significant sell-off this past week in all major indices, dropping nearly 10% across the board, coming off of startling news outside of China where the coronavirus has impacted countries more than initially anticipated and we are close to coming to a pandemic standpoint we're just short of that but all seven continents across the globe have at least one person that has been impacted by the coronavirus which has caused the major markets to sell off starting this past monday and we'll go through the each in detail however just broadly looking at the market for the month of february we've seen significant sell-offs pretty consistently throughout the month however the majority of the sell-off took place just this past week with significant volume from major institutions as well as toward the latter part of the week as information flow continued on all business media and then the broader news market picking up on news stories which created additional selling as we all know major selling begets more selling which begets more selling and becomes this domino effect where we've seen very significant numbers that we haven't seen going back many, many years. And in some instances, all time, we haven't seen this much of a downturn in the broader markets. This past month, we've seen almost full correction across the board in all your major indices, but significantly leading the pack is the NASDAQ down at 10.67% with the Russell coming in right behind that, and then the major reported Dow 30 coming in at just above 9% sell-off with huge ranges, which is also very startling. It shows a, a significant amount of volatility across the board with the S&P 500 coming in just short of a 50-point range, which is huge coming in month over month. So as we dig in always within this update we want to provide some guidance and quite frankly just to provide some confidence and some reassurance that this is something that can be controlled and there are additional major viruses that have impacted the world and have caused major volatility within the market and this is just another one however this seems to be interpreted to be just that much larger and we can see that very significantly with a number of our major indices just dropping and continuing to drop with our S&P as we broadly report provides a overall litmus test for the overall market in comparison to other major indices the S&P is considered kind of the, the the big daddy if you will dropping just greater than 27 points in one month and majority of that drop has come within the last five days so with that, we'll jump right in and take a look at our broader indices. As with always, we will start off with the S&P 500. As we highlighted last week, we actually looked and took a good amount of time to do some analysis on the true index itself, the SPX. So what we have is the same chart that we showcased last week is a 15 year monthly chart where we highlighted this longer term trend line that went all the way back to 2012-2013 time frame to showcase that there could be some possibility of some broader resistance as price continued to touch this broader trend line and in actuality this came to fruition and pardon and we did see some major sell-off as we zoomed in here you can see that we touched this trend line almost to the tick and then that initiated the broader sell-off now some may feel that the broader sell-off was in association with the coronavirus very specifically but at the same time technically there was some alignment as well so depending on your perspective our hypothesis is we always are technical in our nature first and sometimes the broader media begins to align what happens in the broader news to something that has actually happened technically. So if you take a look back, if we zoom back out, you can see very clearly that this trend line has been intact and continues to hold very significantly. At the same time, as we begin to dig into the true ETF, the SPY, you'll see toward the latter part of the week on Friday, a very strong technical reference that enabled market participants to see 
a larger sell-off and jump in for some discounted opportunities. And this is something that we do want to highlight for everyone is that as the market continues to have fear, there is significant opportunities for a higher risk to reward ratio for you to step in and purchase equities or the index ETFs at a particular discount. So do want to highlight that we, we did call this out and we did anticipate some type of bearish move, but it still was kind of 50 50 if we were going to be able to breach that trend line, which would be a very bullish signal. Now, at the same time, as we continue to, to look forward to what may happen in this upcoming week, we will continue to highlight that on our Facebook page. So please don't hesitate to follow us on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash Carl Smith Holdings, where we do provide kind of real time weekly updates as well as our interday updates on potential opportunities for you to step right in. So technically, we are in a bearish territory, but as we dig in later on into the detail, we do see that there was some bullish action toward the latter part of the week, which caused a little bit of the bears to be shut off. But this was something that we did anticipate as well. And we actually did take a few longs on some key equities as an opportunity. Now, with anything, you can trade it anytime you want. If you are uncertain, you typically will reduce your size. So we stepped into a few names from a relatively smaller size perspective to take advantage of this very significant 10% sell-off, which is full correction. So as we always, I just want to highlight uh, the technical analysis that is really key to our hypotheses moving forward. And we do want to jump into the true ETF and continue with our normal update. But we will start off with the monthlies and we can see as we zoom in a little bit here over this last week and month, excuse me, we have seen some very strong sell-off and that is something that you cannot get away from. And we have seen all of our month here we highlighted has taken away all of this bullish run that we have seen over the last few months with one fell swoop. So we always communicate the market goes up 98% of the time. However, when it does go down, it goes down very violently and aggressively that last 2%. And that's exactly what we have seen over the last month and of the last week, very specifically. And as we dig into our weekly chart coming up, we do want to highlight that the volume, specifically on the SPY itself, we've seen almost four times our normal weekly volume and four times our normal monthly volume with the majority of that volume weighted to this past week. So is this something that will continue on into the future? We will see. It depends upon if the retail investors can begin to establish a little bit more confidence that the coronavirus and other impacts will be somewhat subsided. So this is something that we want to continue to watch. But if you are a longer term investor, this is a clear opportunity for you to buy some very strong, fundamentally sound, bellwether type companies. And this is exactly what we did for this peak, this past week. So we did breach our monthly trend line. So on the monthly chart, we are, are seeing a clear bearish signal for some continuation coming into March. But as we dig in on multiple time frames, you can see that there is some opportunity for the bulls to step in and buy this major dip from a mathematical level perspective. And we'll dig into that, jump in. But we do want to highlight what has taken place over this last month. And there are some opportunities for us to really identify, hey, is there an opportunity for us to, to make some changes as price has continued to move downward through our nine week average or 20 week average? And just as I highlighted our 50 week average, and then looking at some type of turnaround moving forward to the latter part of the week as we cross just below our 100 week average and our point of control over the last year. So what can take place moving forward? That's very much 50-50. However, as we dig in and we'll show the daily chart momentarily, you can see that very fundamental areas from a reversal perspective have been met. And we'll kind of highlight that from a Fibonacci perspective as we look here, you can see that price mapped directly into 
the 786 and, and returned back upward very aggressively. So mathematically, there is some opportunity for the bulls to step in and take an opportunity to uh, drive prices just that much higher. And then secondarily, we do want to showcase that even if we move our pivot point up higher from a Fibonacci perspective, you can see very significantly that things are moving in a upward bias just in the short term. So there is an opportunity for us to take advantage as we continue to repeat. And you can kind of see this on just this past Friday, we came in very bullishly toward the latter part of the day. Now, this could be individuals that had participated in the market over the last few days, trading days, and are looking to close their positions. But at the same time, we did see very strong volume coming in on Friday toward the latter part of the day, which we'll highlight here at the bottom, significant volume on Friday in comparison to other days. So we anticipate that this is a shorter term bullish signal and it's something that we have seen in other indices as well. So from an S&P 500 perspective, if you take a look at the moves over the last few days, it is a significant sell-off, but is this a sell-off just to push out some of your shorter term intermediate traders and allow the big institutions to take some risk off given the bullish run that we've had over quite frankly the, the last seven to ten years and significantly over the last two years and then certainly january was an extremely bullish month for all indices as you can see here there is an opportunity to take some risk so take some risk off the table and re-enter at a lower price. So that's our hypothesis that we believe that this is a buying opportunity for us in the short term, and we will look for confirmation if this upcoming week will close out very bullishly as well. So we do anticipate that. As we jump ahead to the NASDAQ, you can see very consistently, as we saw in the S&P 500, Friday's action did close with a bullish candle. So for those that do enter the market on a daily basis, not necessarily some of you, but those that do will look at this as a buy signal coming into Monday and coming into Tuesday, unless there is some larger news that does happen over the weekend. And if we take a look at our normal weekly chart, we can see clearly that our value area was touched However, there was a clear rejection of price as we closed in on this 50 period moving average here. And that's also a bullish signal for us. We kind of call this a, a look below and fail from an auction perspective. And there is an opportunity for the bulls to try to see if there's some continuation. Now we do anticipate some type of potential retest of this low, roughly $198, but that's something that is uh, kind of a 60-40 probability that that won't have and happen given what we saw on Friday from a bullish perspective. However, even on the NASDAQ, as I look at our volume for the month, we saw just above 954 million shares that were traded. However, of that 954, we saw almost 533 million shares just traded this past week. So significant sell-off across the board, which has caused a great amount of fear for all market participants, those that have uh, pension funds, IRAs, 401ks. Please take a look at this as an opportunity, not only just from a loss perspective, can you re mitigate that loss, but also thinking longer term, is there an opportunity for us to take advantage of this? And as we always say, there is some opportunities in everywhere. There's a bull market in, in all aspects. And we do believe this is kind of the pattern that will take off moving forward for most of our indices, as we kind of call this a Zorro pattern, where we've pushed up, pulled back, retraced to a very visual and mathematical reference, and then potentially over time, over the next few weeks, aggressively moving to higher prices. Now, upcoming this next week, we don't necessarily see a full retracement of this 26 point range on the nasdaq and even greater on the s p but this is an opportunity for those that have missed this longer run 
coming back multiple years as an opportunity to step in. And that's exactly what we did as we move on to the Russell, we'll highlight from a monthly perspective as well. You can see that we have traversed and touched almost exactly where the value area high aligned and rejected that price. If we zoom in a little bit, you can see a clear price rejection here and it traversed all the way down and touched uh, value area low coming in at that $143 level. So back into range, as you can see over the last few months and the majority of last year, we were kind of stuck in this back and forth trading range with the Russell. And then just most recently, a breakout toward the latter part of the year in October, very aggressive bullish nature pushing all the way up to our value area high and actually retested it twice in January and into February and it began to, to fail and roll off. Now, obviously, the, the Russell is heavily weighted to U.S. companies and potentially the impact towards U.S.-based companies that actually do their manufacturing outside of the U.S. and potentially impact the countries has caused us to identify this as a particular sell zone for the month. So for the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Russell on the monthly and the weekly, we do see this as a bearish signal. But on the daily charts, we do see this as an opportunity from a buy perspective. So we'll highlight that the Russell did try to fill the gap from the weekly perspective and actually did, but did not necessarily have enough follow through to continue to push upward, traversed all the way back throughout the range of value and, and crossed a, a very pivotal moving average, the 200 week moving average, and actually powered right through that. But here's a bullish sign that it did close above it here. And however, we weren't able to get back into value from a weekly perspective. So this could continuation. So our bias from a Russell, the continuation could be sideways to up over the next week. And then we'll take a look at the daily. You can see if we zoom in a little bit here, you can see how a bullish nature it was coming in at the low of 143.91 peaked above roughly 154 level, but failed the auction to pull out of value from a weekly perspective. So the Russell is bullish on the daily, but it's a weaker bullish, which indicates for us, we do anticipate kind of some sideways moving action over the next week or so. This upcoming week is relatively light on US economic news. So we will want to kind of keep our news feed open and aware as things could continue to come out with additional news on the coronavirus and potential impact to us based companies as we shift over to the dow you can also see here very significant sell-off from the month roughly 49 point drop in the dow and that's roughly uh nine percent a little bit greater than nine percent as we highlighted earlier so we do want to watch this and again, mathematically, we did see some type of retracement that actually came in at the key level for us. And we do want to watch that and we'll just measure it out for you. As you can see, right at the 61.8, which is kind of one of those last lines of the sand for the bulls to, to tip, step in and take a bullish movement. So we want to watch the Dow on the monthly you do see a very specific area as we zoom in almost to the tick you see a clear rejection of the auction as well as you do see a low volume node which highlighted and strengthened the potential for prices not to move much much lower so as we continue to to move forward we do want to watch this as we shift over to our normal weekly we don't analyze the dow just that much only once a month but you do see very specifically areas where the auction has failed in previous terms. So back in June, we were back at this 247 level, which we hit again to the tick, kind of a double bottom uh, price pattern perspective. So we do want to watch this and hopefully we do see some bullish action. I know that will calm a lot of individuals and certainly the pundits on the news channels because there is a lot of fear that's out there and it's very much uh, warranted 
as global travel has begun to slow down across the board. And some of our safe havens, we have seen gold selling off over the last month as it hit all time highs and began to sell off right back. Now gold is typically a hedge towards your broader equity indices. However, there was clear selling fear in all major asset classes outside of bonds, which is definitely a hedge toward our broader indices. So as you can see here, gold has certainly sold off and has kind of come into range and almost closed at where it opened for the month, kind of this bottoming tail hammer or doji. You do see this is a uh, kind of an indication of the existing trend coming to a close. So we do anticipate, at least on the monthly chart, some sideways action for gold moving forward through in March. Now, as we look at our normal weekly, you can see this much clearer of the broader sell off. And we did see almost 11 and a half points in range, which is very large for gold. As you can see, we have had a very significant and strong run as you kind of went sideways and then continuation. So as the market goes from bullish to neutral to bullish or from bearish to neutral to bearish, we do want to kind of highlight this opportunity as coming back into range and receiving some type of price acceptance at the 146, 145 level, as we see here, a multi-week balance area where prices kind of come in and potentially will continue sideways as volume begins to, to continue upward. But at the same time, we do potentially see if the indices do continue to move forward, this may be an opportunity for just a larger trading range coming from 158 down to 146. So there could be this type of action where we have a larger trading range and have some ability to kind of go sideways for gold over the next few weeks. Now, this is something that we are clear about in regards to the overall fear of the market but have some patience. Your time frame should be just that much longer. So if you are somewhat nervous, call your financial advisor. We do highly recommend you contact your financial advisor. Don't hesitate to reach out to me. My email and our webpage will be listed in the notes. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button for our updates if you enjoy what we provide and it has provided you some guidance and some confidence don't hesitate to provide that feedback. So as always, it's your money and it's under your control. Take care.